Hey everybody, welcome. My name is Sasar. I am one of the teaching pastors here at Familia Church. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm using a new platform, so I just want to make sure it or a new uh, stream streaming service. So let me just make sure it's live. <laughs> Slight patience, please. Mm, looks like it is. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so thank you for joining me here tonight. I am going to be talking a little bit about what Pastor Gilbert talked about this past Sunday at church. Um, let me just pull up my notes here. And I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a really important week uh, for our religion. Um, pretty much on Sunday, we had Palm Sunday, where people were yelling out Hosanna, right? And, and they were crying out to Jesus Christ in favor of Jesus Christ. Throughout the week, uh, yesterday, Wednesday, was uh, when Judas betrayed Jesus Christ. Um, and then he was, you know, um, pretty much framed and said that he did something that he didn't do. And and they were trying to get him crucified and he went back and forth. And at the end, they pretty much um, were able to crucify and kill him. On Friday, we will have a live. Uh, or we'll be live at the church if you want to um, show up there and support. Yeah, we're going to be... Uh, at the church at 6 p.m. this Friday, and we'll be talking about the crucifixion. Um, and then that was on Friday. And then, you know, he was um, dead, I guess, for, for three days, and then he resurrected on Sunday. So from one week, it went from people cheering about Jesus Christ to him being crucified on Friday to him resurrecting on Sunday. So very, very, uh, I guess, interesting, but a huge change in how people saw Jesus Christ. And John 3.16 says that we, just because of everything that Jesus Christ did, that, you know, dying on the cross for our sins, because of that, if you believe that, if you believe that he was alive, that he was alive on Palm Sunday, that he was crucified on the cross, that he then resurrected on Sunday and he's alive today. If you believe that story in Jesus Christ, you can go to heaven. And I think that's what all that's about. It's about salvation. It's about giving you an opportunity to go to heaven if you believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, and you can find that in John 3, 16. So hopefully you guys will... Um, We'll, we'll do that, right? Hopefully you will believe in Jesus Christ. Because um, salvation is pretty much based on belief. Um, I heard something earlier this week, and it really, really, uh, you know, opened my eyes to a different perspective on it. Um, the guy on the cross, right, when Jesus Christ was crucified, there was two other guys there. And um, so they're laying there on the cross. Uh, the other guy, one of them was a thief, and he was being crucified, and he was going to die that day as well. But he's on there. He's naked on the cross. He didn't get down to get baptized, right? He didn't get, like, he didn't heal sick. He didn't create, he didn't do these great things in his life for Jesus Christ to earn salvation. He pretty much was um, just there on the cross dying, um, and he had never met Jesus Christ before. It was the first time he was meeting him. And he simply just said, remember me, Jesus Christ. He believed in Jesus Christ in that moment. And because of that, Jesus Christ said, today you will uh, be there with me in paradise. So that's why we at Family at Church always say, you know, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you can go to heaven. You don't have to be this perfect person. You don't have to have walked a really holy life your whole life. Uh, some people believe you have to be baptized, but that... That guy didn't get down from the cross, go get baptized, right, before he died. He was going to die on that cross along with Jesus Christ. And he was going to heaven simply for believing in Jesus Christ. So if you ever felt like you haven't done enough or you haven't given enough to the church, that guy didn't give a dime to the church. And yet he's still going to be saved. He's still going to go to heaven. 
So something to keep in mind that Jesus Christ loves you. He wants you to go to heaven. You don't have to do anything to earn your salvation. The only thing we have to do is believe in Jesus Christ and you will go to heaven. Um, and that's, you know, every time you're like, oh, I'm not good enough. Right. Just remember the guy on the cross. He's sitting there about to die. All he could do is believe in Jesus Christ. And for that reason, he's going to go to heaven one day. Um, so choose to believe in Jesus Christ. You will go to heaven. Our series this week has been um, about the crucifixion, right? Because Easter's coming up. Um, so Palm Sunday, we talked about that this past Sunday. Gilbert did a great job on the on the sermon. So make sure you check that out for this past Sunday. Um, this Friday, make sure you guys check it out live uh, here on Facebook or make sure you um, show up at, at our church. And we're going to be talking about um, the crucifixion. It's really, it's going to be really cool because usually we do one in Spanish, one in English. This time we're going to do the bilingual, which is something that we used to do in the past. Um, and we're going to do it again this Friday. So uh, hopefully you guys like it. Uh, if you ever wanted to learn Spanish or learn English, it's going to be in both languages. So you can kind of, we'll, we'll kind of help you with that. <laughs> All right. So he talked about um, Mark. 11, 7 through 10. And that's kind of what he was talking about for Palm Sunday. Um, and what I was dwelling on for this talk was what happened exactly, right? You you would want to know, like, how is it that they were worshiping on Sunday, yelling out, Hosanna, like, this is, you know, great that he's here and he's a king. And, and they're yelling at, out and praising him. How did it turn from that to being crucified on Friday in one week? That's it was like in one week. And I would just say that it was, yeah, Judas was used by Satan, right? He was used to to lie and to kind of set up Jesus Christ. But it, it really comes down to Satan, right? Satan is the one that did that and lies and gossip and rumors or whatever it was that Satan did. Somehow he turned everybody against Jesus Christ and everybody pretty much was cheering crucify him um, or most people were. Maybe they were afraid to speak up, but they, you know, most of them, even the apostles were afraid to speak up against the crowds that were just like yelling crucify him on on Friday, which is, you know, sad. Once you think about who Jesus Christ is, it's sad that the people just turned on him. Um but I think it comes down to the lies and deception. Um, the the you know obviously it was the the people that were after him. It was um, there was different Jewish cult, uh, sections back then, kind of like there's a bunch of of them for Christianity today. And I think the leaders of a specific one of the Pharisees were just you know after him, kind of his whole life, his whole ministry. They were just trying to say he wasn't you know who he said he was. And they were just after him. And I think eventually figured out how to do it. And and again, I think Satan used them. I think he used their pride, their hatred, their anger um, to get them to do those things against Jesus Christ. Um, you know, the whole life Jewish people have been expecting um, the Messiah. They've been expecting Jesus Christ their whole life. And here he was in front of them and they rejected him, which is predicted in the Bible 2000 years before. But it's sad that they didn't see that. And even today, there's people, there's Jewish people that unfortunately don't believe in Jesus Christ. They think they're still waiting for Jesus for the first time. They're still waiting for the Messiah for the first time. And that's unfortunate, right? Because we all know who Jesus Christ is. So it's pretty hard to ignore Jesus Christ nowadays. And hopefully, um, you know, with all the social media and everything, they, they can kind of uh, see that this was the Messiah. You know, there's so much proof for it. Um, but I did also want to talk about Judas because I think that was a turning point. Judas, everybody kind of knows who Judas is. Everybody knows that he betrayed Jesus Christ, pretty much uh, lied and, and had him um, accused of things that he, you know, probably wasn't doing, um, that, that he wasn't doing. But he, everybody doesn't like Judas, right? But I will make the argument that I think Jesus, uh, that Judas went to heaven. It's a possibility. Uh, ultimately only God knows, but I think he went, he had, it was a possibility he went to heaven. And I'm going to give you a list of the reasons why I think he went to heaven. And then you guys can add comments or you can tell me what you think. But I, you know, as an eye opener, I was like, mm, no, I think, you know, he went to heaven. I don't think he's in hell. So I'm going to give you a list, see what you guys think. Hopefully this will blow your mind or open your eyes. <laughs> 
All right, so Jesus, uh, Judas, um, I think can be in heaven. The first reason is uh, Jesus wants Judas in heaven, even though he betrayed him, just like we all do. We're all sinners, right? God tells us not to sin and we sin. So we all kind of betrayed Jesus and God in a way. Um, but I think Jesus wanted Judas to go to heaven. That's why he kept being nice to him, even though Jesus knew what Judas was up to. He continued to be nice to him. He continued to preach to him. And Jesus just wasn't listening in the beginning, but I think eventually he listened. Um, you know, some people say, well, Judas can't go to heaven because he was a sinner, right? So, you know, if he was a sinner, um, he he's not in heaven. Well, I got news for you. I don't know if this will kind of blow your mind a little bit, but everyone who's in heaven right now and everyone who's going to go to heaven was a sinner. Everyone was a sinner. I'm a sinner. And yet I'm going to go to heaven one day because I believe in Jesus Christ. I haven't really done anything great that I can say, that's why I'm going to heaven. No, it's just simply because I believe in Jesus Christ. That's why I'm going to heaven. And that's why I think Judas, um, it's possible that he's in heaven. Um, and people are like, well, he betrayed Jesus. Like if he had betrayed any other person, fine, but he betrayed Jesus Christ, the son of the only begotten son of God. So yeah, he's probably in heaven in hell. Uh, but again, so did so have we all kind of betrayed Jesus in a way because we all sin. But the, if you look at the apostles, they all kind of betrayed Jesus too. They when he was being crucified and when he was being tortured on his way to the cross, the apostles were there and they didn't stand up for him. They didn't, you know, run in and say, take me too. Like they kind of all ignored him and betrayed him in a way. So I don't think that's a justification to say he went to hell because he betrayed Jesus. Um, you know, um, they regretted it, but a lot of them did too. Um, and you could say, yeah, a lot of them, uh, Judas just didn't believe because he was walking with Jesus Christ and he was the only one that didn't believe. But that's also that's also not exactly accurate because some of the other apostles didn't believe either. Even um, when, when Jesus died, they were distraught. If they knew he was God, they wouldn't have been so distraught. They would have been like, oh, Jesus Christ, of course, he's God. He's, he'll be all right. He'll come back. Right. But instead, they were like distraught. They were broken up about it. Um, and even, you know, as we know, doubting Thomas is what he's referred to, didn't even believe Jesus Christ when he was standing in front of him after he resurrected. After he resurrected, he stood in front of him and Thomas was like, I don't believe you. So I have to see the holes on your hands. And he actually had to touch the holes in his hands to believe that it was him. So even after Jesus Christ resurrected and stood in front of him, he still was doubting. He still didn't believe. So I think for that reason, you know, he, Judas was the only one that didn't exactly um, believe in that, maybe, maybe believe that he was gone, that Jesus Christ was gone. But I think one of the biggest moments where I'm kind of like, all right, this is, this is the turning point for Judas was he, when he repented of what he did. So yes, he betrayed Jesus Christ, but then he repented. And that's what it, that's what we Christians do, right? When we believe in Jesus Christ, you kind of repent. And sin, you no longer feel good about sin. You're like, no, I don't want to sin anymore. So he had that moment. I think he had that moment of faith that is that we have where he believed in Jesus Christ. And he, he even went back to the Pharisees and he was like, have you traded an innocent man here? And, you know, the Bible says that we cannot have two masters. It's either money or God. And it, it was money because he betrayed Jesus for money. It was like 30 pieces of silver, which is like nothing but... He betrayed him for money. But then once he realized what he had done, I think once he believed in Jesus Christ, he went back to the Pharisees and was like, I, I betrayed an innocent man. And he threw the money at them. If at that moment, Judas still, his master was still money, he would have kept the money. But instead, he kind of had a turning point. He repented of his sin. He threw the money back at them and said, I don't want this money anymore. And, and he threw it away. So at that point, I think that he had repented of his sin and he was saved because he believed in Jesus Christ and he no longer, money was no longer his master at that moment. Um, and then some people, I guess, ultimately you would say, well, he, he betrayed Jesus Christ. He did all these things, but at the end, he, he kind of killed himself, right? He committed suicide and that's an unforgivable sin. But we know that the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say that that's an unforgivable sin. It says the only unforgivable sin is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And that's not what he did. So he could have still been forgiven, even though he betrayed Jesus Christ. And even though he killed himself, I think he could have still 
been uh, forgiven for what he for what he did. He felt so bad and destroyed about what he did that he did that to himself, right? He committed suicide, but he, I think it was because he believed in Jesus Christ at that moment. So for that reason, that's what I'm going to go with is I think he's in heaven. Uh, and, you know, it, at this point, when we look back, we do think that he was like this really bad person, but I think he repented and and any all of us can do that, right? We can um, repent of our of our sin, and Jesus Christ will forgive us, and He will take us to heaven, um, just like He took that guy on the cross to heaven, just like He can take Judas to heaven. Um, I think that Jesus, that Judas is in heaven, and Jesus Christ. That's how He shows us His great love is that He's willing to forgive us. And when He died on the cross, He didn't die for really good holy people. He died on the cross for the for the whole world. He died on the cross for everybody who is a sinner. Um, and there's a verse that says, "While we were still sinners, He died for us." So when He died on the cross, He took on everybody's sin to forgive us or clean us of our sins, so that then we can be in God's presence. Um, and he did that for while we were still sinners, not after we were re these really good people while we were sinners. So keep that in mind and know that no matter what you've done, Jesus Christ loves you uh, and he wants you to go to heaven. I have these other notes, but um, I see the time and I think I'll have to talk about them next week. Um, but um, really good notes about getting closer to God and reading your Bible and the power there is in prayer. So hopefully I'll see you guys next week and we'll talk about that stuff for now. Um, just, you know, keep praying for family at church. Um, we have some of the members that have health issues, including myself. I have this face paralysis that, you know, hasn't exactly gone away. It's been over three months and, you know, uh, prayers are really appreciated. Um, and, you know, keep praying for everybody in family at church. Um, and hopefully we see you there this Friday. Uh, and, you know, we'll, um, if anything, we'll, we'll see you live, if anything. But definitely add your comments if you have any questions about the stuff that I talked about today. Don't send me angry emails about Judas. Ultimately, we love everyone and we want everybody to go to heaven. So if I went to heaven and I saw Judas there, I would be happy i would not be angry and be like what's this guy doing here right i would be super happy knowing that he's saved and he's not in hell because i don't want anybody to go to hell because if you really read into it it's a horrible place and you don't want to be there so that's it for now hopefully we'll see you guys there um this friday 6 p.m sunday 9 30 a.m in spanish uh, 11 o'clock in english this sunday we'll be talking about the uh, the crucifixion this Friday, we'll be talking about resurrection on Sunday. So hopefully we'll see you in one of those. Um, until next time, God bless you from Familia Church.